Hello. Welcome. I was doing some serious business through Zoom today, hence the shirt. And when I got off, I, I got on Twitter and I saw something that I found funny, cringy, and disturbing all at once. A wonderful combination. What I'm talking about is an article from The Atlantic written by a lefty author. We'll get to him in a second. In which he compares covering the Trump administration like landing at Omaha Beach. A landing during World War II where 2,400 troops lost their lives. It was horrible, disturbing, patriotic. And this man thinks covering Donald Trump is the same. Then we'll move on to look at some of CNN's ethical editing. You'll find it quite interesting. I know I did. So without further ado, let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, grab your popcorn, bring your friends, sit back, relax, and enjoy as we read the The Atlantic's article by Alexander Nazarian. And if I mispronounce your name, sorry. I was an enemy of the people. Without quite meaning to, Trump reminded the generalists that their relationship to power should be adversarial. Now, the reason why they forgot this is because during the eight years of Obama, there was no German journalism being done. And now, through the Biden administration, we're seeing the same thing. Mr. Biden, what's your favorite ice cream color? Get out of here. But let's get started. Thrilling, without a single boring day. That's how I'd describe my four years as an enemy of the people, a lanyard-wearing member of the Luchenpress, a term some Donald Trump supporters borrowed from the Nazis. I bet none of them did. I bet he's just making this up. To refer to insufficiently flattering covering of their moment or of the men who led it. I miss it already. I miss it terribly. Even if I miss little else about the past four years. Notice how all the CNN rankings, CNN, MSNBC, even Fox, they're all going down. Even Twitter use is going down. Why? Because the orange man has nothing to say. He's playing golf. But these people are still hanging on. That's why they're writing this type of articles. But let's keep going. Without quite meaning to, Trump reminded journalists that their relationship to power should be adversarial. I hope my colleagues in the press corps, I am a national correspondent for Netanyahu News, remember that as some measure of pre-Trumpian curtainness returns to the White House briefing room. The brandishing of Nazi imprecations was yet another sign that Trump took things way too far, but he didn't exactly litigate us to concentration camps for the unflattering stories we published. He didn't exactly relegate us was he even close? During my first MSNBC hit, he always called it a hit, never anything, but I mispronounced Mueller, making the first syllable sound like a lowing of a cow. What are you talking about? Either the anchor didn't notice or it made no difference because the producers asked me back. Not many times, but enough for my children to regard me with measure of awe, as if I were taking regular journeys into outer space. What is wrong with this guy? And now Trump is gone. Oh, I know. We will always have Kafifi. We will always have Press Secretary Sean Spicer advancing his exceedingly novel argument that not even Hitler gassed people. Yes, he really said that. And Kylie McEnany after him informing us that she would never lie then proceeding to do so relentlessly for months on end while a cross dangled prominently from her neck. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention to Jen Psaki, the new press house, White House secretary, who whenever you ask her a question that she doesn't want to answer, says, uh, uh, let me circle back on that. About all was a this isn't really happening sensation, followed by a realization that not only was it really happening, but it was my job to figure out why and to whom and not infrequently whether readers ought to expect nuclear war. I don't think we will recover that peculiar theory until the presidency of Majorie Taylor Greene. These people are hoping Major Taylor Green becomes prominent like Trump did because, frankly, she's a little out there, and they want to paint all Republicans or they want to paint everyone who's not a lefty Democrat as a crazy person. Oh, like the, the Major Taylor Green party and the nuclear war thing. What are you talking about? We're never close. Never close. I use that word thrill with full intention. No need to tell me about the cruel immigration policy, the incompetent pandemic response, the racism and bigotry, the frightening chaos. We never gave you time. We kept the foot on the gas. A top former West Wing staffer told me in 2018 when I was writing a book on the Trump administration, that same staffer manifested that there was no chaos, only method. 
I believe that at first, until I didn't. Now this is the juicy part. Covering the administration was thrilling for many journalists, in the way that I imagine storming Omaha Beach must have been for a 20 year old fresh from the plains of Kansas. Yeah, same thing. He hadn't signed up for battle, but there he was, liberating France. France, by the way, is where Trump called American soldiers with fallen in combat suckers and losers. That has been debunked. This is fake news, but they print it anyway, why not? Who's gonna, who's gonna keep them in check? When this, bank, when this magazine first reported those comments, Trump supporters denounced the Atlantic story as some preposterous and offensive, even as an outlet after outlet confirmed the reporting. That's not true, they just quoted each other. They failed to realize that the preposterous and offensive were the twin beacons of the Trump presidency. Journalism, journalists were merely going where he led. This was our Omaha Beach. I, for one, would have rather been in Hawaii. Oh, you're such a victim and you're so brave. You're so brave for covering the Trump administration. You deserve a medal of honor. And here I am, my home, covering the Biden administration like a loser. I should have had the balls and the bravery to cover the orange man. Good for you, sir. I'm sure your kids look at you in awe. But let's move on. Let's move on to CNN's ethical editing. The funny thing about this is, to keep in mind, Joe Biden claims that the reason why he ran for president is because of the Charlottesville incident, where Trump didn't denounce the white supremacists and where he said there was fine people on both sides. But that didn't really happen. And even I believed that. Because remember, I voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. I was still in the college Democrat super lefty mode until I realized, oh, wait, pff, I was an idiot. So let me read this. Reporter, the neo-Nazis started this thing. They showed up in Charlottesville. Trump, excuse me. They didn't put themselves down as neo-Nazis. And you had some very bad people crossed out in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. See how that's a different statement? You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a part from Robert E. Lee to another name. A reporter, George Washington and Robert E. Lee are not the same. This is where it gets prophetic. Trump, oh no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we, are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down his statue? He was a major slave owner. Are we going to take down his statue? You know what? I'm fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. I had many people in that group other than the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, okay? And the press had treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group, also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers. And you see them come with black outfits and with the helmets and with the basal bats. He was describing Antifa before he even knew what Antifa was. You had a lot of bad people in the other group, too. CNN headline and description. President Trump calls the neo-Nazis and white supremacists fine people. Don Lamont. And one of the fruits of the Trump presidency, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, marching on the streets of Charlottesville, him not denouncing them, saying they were fine people. Do you think this president is racist? No, I don't think this president is racist because that's not what he said. You know what I think? I think he's a prophet. Because this actually happened. They took down statues of Washington, Thomas Jefferson. They're renaming schools right now in California. Thomas Jefferson School? No, sir, that's racist. George Washington, racist. These people are trying to change and erase your history. This is, this is incredibly dangerous and people are not waking up to it. Last, I want to show you something from Officer Tatum, a YouTuber, influencer, whatever you want to call it. He used to be an ex-cop. He's a conservative influencer. And he's, he's a very interesting, really fun guy. He had this tweet. To all liberals who had been calling Trump Hitler for the last four years, Trump never censored free speech. You did. Trump never used the media to silence his political opposition. You did. Trump never threatened to take away the people's guns. You did. Trump never threatened to put people who disagreed with him politically into re-education re camps. You did. You might want to take a good look in the mirror. 
AOC, Crazy Nancy, Crazy Kamala. You guys might want to take a good look in the mirror. Because you not only accuse Trump of disturbing things, but you also support those disturbing things. Hmm. Make sure to follow Officer Tatum on Twitter and YouTube. Good guy. Good content. Ginger approved. And also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and BitChute because as of now, I still can't upload on YouTube because our overlords had censored me for a week for no particular reason. Video on that coming up soon. Thank you for watching. Please comment. It helps. Like. Subscribe. See you next time. Thank you.